All right, so as of a couple of days ago, uh, GitHub decided to change its terminology to use more inclusive terms. And further to that, what they are doing is they are replacing the term master branch with main branch. So this is a default that's happening, has happened on GitHub as of a couple of days ago. And to be able to work in sync with this, we need to make some changes to Git. So I'm going to go through, explain the changes in GitHub, show how those work. I'm going to talk about the command line changes and the version changes of Git itself, the Git program on the computer. Uh, some of the things I'm going to be doing are talking about settings on Mac OS specifically, but um, a fair bit of this is going to apply to whether you're using Windows or Mac. All right, so jumping into GitHub. Now, if you are looking for this change and where it takes place, if you go into your settings on your account and then you go into the repository section you'll find this little thing right here this has automatically been changed there's nothing that you are required to do but this is going to be the default branch name from this point forward for all of your repos so if I were to create a new repo like here I'm on the new repo page and I come in here let's say I'm gonna call it git temp um, just a demo now inside of here, making a public repository, uh, once I add any file, it's actually going to create the branch. Uh, without this, it's just sort of an empty repo with no branches. But if I add a readme or a git ignore or choose a license file, you can see this message is toggling down here at the bottom and it will set main as the default branch. So we do that, great, okay. Um, there we go, I've added a couple of files, I've created the repository, and you can see right here, it does now say main instead of master. Master's not in this list at all. Okay, great. So no changes were required by me. I did not have to do anything. GitHub has just been updated so that this exists. Now, if you are going to be working with Git on your computer as well, which if you're using Git, you're going to be doing it on your computer, um, Windows, there's only one download here, and you can see that it is version 2.28. This is the required version that has these changes built into it. On Mac OS, there's several ways to do it. We can build from source, and we will get the version 2.28. You can use Homebrew, and Homebrew now has version 2.28, or there's the binary installer. So we don't have to get the 2.28 right now. There's ways to work with the older version. Uh, and so if you've got the binary installer downloaded and you've got a version of 2.27 or 2.23, 2.24, whatever it is, we can still work with that. And I'm going to show you how you can set up Z Shell to work with the different versions. Um, Homebrew, like I said, has version 2.28. So different ways of doing it. Uh, you can follow the link to download the package and install it. You'll get the uh, you download the disk image, open that up to get the package, run the package, and install it. Um, if you're comfortable building from source, you can do that yourself, or we can use Homebrew. Um, so I'm going to show you. I've got actually all of them. I've got the version that Mac OS gave me with Xcode. I've got the binary installer version with 2.27 and I've got the version with homebrew. All three of them are installed on my Mac and I'm going to show you how I can work with all of these right now. Now I'm using Z Shell. That is the default from uh, the latest two versions, the last two versions of Mac OS uh, instead of bash. And if you've got a terminal, let's see right here, if you see bash, if you open up terminal and it says bash up here at the top, it means that you're using bash, not Z shell. And if we come in here, if you've got Z shell installed, which you should if you've got one of the later versions of Mac OS, um, we can come in here into preferences. So the terminal preferences, and you can change right here under general. This says bin slash Z shell. If yours says slash bin slash bash, you should be able to switch this over to use Z shell. Um, so installing oh my Z shell as a, a formatting tool to use a plugin to use with Z shell. Uh, that's a separate topic from this video, but I'm assuming that you've got Z shell installed and then you can, um, I'll put a link to the oh my Z shell website down in the description if you need to install that. And then you can make this change right there. Now, 
once I've got it, if I need to switch over to Z shell, this is the command that we use from the command line that does the same thing. So change shell dash s slash bin slash Z shell. This will change it from bash over to Z shell. So you can use the terminal preferences way or you can do it from the command line. Either way, now we've got Z shell. And you can see it looks a little bit different than the bash did. If you had bash installed, you've got these little green arrows, color formatting, all kinds of fun stuff like that. Okay, so with Z shell installed, there is a file called Z shell RC right here. And it is installed inside of, so if I go to slash, this is my user folder. Inside of there, if I scroll through all my files, and we will find inside of here the Z shell RC dot Z shell RC. This is the setting file that runs every time you launch a terminal if you've got Z shell installed. So I've got that file and I've got it open here. Um, I've got all my environment variables and so on set up and we can create an alias for the git command. Now depending on whether or not you've got the one from Xcode, the one from the, pa the binary package installer, or you've got the one from Homebrew, there's going to be different locations where that is installed. So by default, if I say git version, there we go. This is what I've got installed. This is the one from Xcode. When I installed Xcode, I got this. All right, fine. Version 2.24. I can work with that. The installer package, this one right here, well, if I point to this different location, I'm pointing to the different version that's installed. And then this one is the one for um, Homebrew. And I'm going to scroll down to near the bottom here. I've added a section in here um, with some comments. Look for the section that says plugins and then git. So you should have this inside the Z shell RC file. It tells Z shell that you want the git plugin to be installed. Great. Now, by default, it's this regular version of Git that's installed. But if I come in here and I say alias Git this, I'm going to be looking at the installer package instead. So if I now, I can either open up a new terminal like this. Now it's reread this file. I saved the changes. This file was saved. When you open a new terminal, it reads the file again. We can do that. And you can see now it's git 2.27. So we had 2.24 and now we're looking at 2.27. So we have switched which version of git that we're looking at. Now, if I change this again and I go over to this other one, you can see there's a regular expression that I'm actually using in here as part of the path. And I'm saying any numbers or periods, any combination of numbers or periods inside of here between git and bin. And that's because the homebrew version installs it inside of seller. There's a folder called git. Inside that, there's a folder for the version number. And then bin. And then this is where git is located. So I had to put that in there as part of this path. So if we now open up a new terminal, or we can dynamically load this. Just make sure I save it. We can dynamically load this again by using the source command. And then I can say, you know what, I want to reload all the settings. So zshrc, this is the file right here. This is its location, my home folder. So I'm going to run that. Okay, it ran this again. And now if I do git version, there we go. Now I have version 2.28 because I'm looking at the homebrew installed one. All right, so this is the version number that we want to see. We want to see the homebrew version of git because with version 2.28, now we have access to that new main branch. Okay, so let me clear this out. There we go. Next, I want to talk about the um, actual new commands that we can do with this new version of Git. Now, this is the stuff that is not macOS specific anymore. It's just dealing with the new commands in Git. First of all, 
setting this up. So from this point on, it's going to use the new main name for this default branch. So git config, I'm going to modify my global settings for git. And inside of here, the setting I want to change is init default branch. There we go. So with the git, the init command, the default branch that's going to be used every time from this point on is main. There. Now if I do git init, it's going to use this. As long as I've got version 2.28, it's going to use main as the name of the branch. Now, I don't have to set this in there. Now, this is the most convenient way to do it, but we can also just call the git init command and we can say dash b main. The dash b, this is something new that was added to the init command. This is the ability to create a branch as the default branch when you're initializing it. So in my, in my folder here, git temp, this is my folder. I do this. There we go. It has now created this git.git .git folder, and we can see that it recognizes the fact that we're in a git repo. VS Code's recognizing this, and Z Shell's formatting it for us, and main is the branch right now that we are working with. Now, if you ever want to see what the head is pointing to, there is a file in here called head. This is the current pointer. It's the main branch that it's looking at. All right. So we have a branch called main that is used to create our repo. Now I can go back to doing everything else that I normally did back in here with my repository when I created it. If I copy that, I can do my git remote add origin. There it is. There we go. And now these two are going to be in sync because the local one on my computer, the, the default branch is main, the branch that I'm working with is main, and the one up here on GitHub is also called main. And that's it. That's really all that you need to know. Um, so we've got these two new commands that we can do. Well, I can do git config dash dash global init default branch main. I can do that at any point. Uh, I don't have to have the latest version. But when you create it, it's going to ignore this command. Like if I just did git init and I had an older version, it would just ignore this setting. The dash b main, this is the new part. And when it does the git init command, now it looks for this setting to see what it should use as the name. All right, so I hope that helps you out. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I'll answer as many as I have time for. And as always, thanks for watching.